Hey, it's Norm from Tesla.com, and we think 2014, if you guys don't believe it, virtual reality is gonna be a big thing. We've seen the Oculus Rift, there's a treadmill you can run on, but the interface controls is something we're still trying to figure out, whether you're keyboard and mouse or gamepad, and a company here, Sixth Sense, has a technology that they think is gonna be how you're gonna interact in the virtual space. So, I'm here with Amir Rubin, the CEO of Sixth Sense, and you guys developed technology that was in Razor's Hydra, right? Uh, how did that work, and how is that different from what you have developed today? The first thing that we've done is focused for the past uh, five years on, on developing the best technology for motion tracking. I come from professional simulation. Electromagnetic tracking has always been the professional best of breed tracking technology to work with. For years, been way too expensive. Just like VR, just like head mounted displays, it was very difficult to find the, 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 the method of reducing cost from the professional grade to the consumer level. Can we explain magnetic tracking in detail? Because in terms of motion tracking, you have uh, one category, accelerometers and gyroscopes, there's optical tracking, but this is using electromagnetic fields. Exactly, so talking about electromagnetics, it's a, it goes very simple. You create a field with, with uh, three coils. It's a three-dimensional field that each coil creates his axis. Then you have the sensor that sits in each controller. It tracks that field with three coils in it. And now you have full six gears of freedom. It generates nine numbers, which is the overall numbers that are created from those two coils meeting at the same time. And now you have every four milliseconds, you have a position and orientation data that controls the 3D object on the screen. So in terms of motion tracking, not only do you get rotational movement, you get a lot of translation and positional tracking at a very accurate level. Um, so so it's like the Razer Hydra was a technology that you developed and licensed to Razer. And now you have something called the STEM system. You guys launched a Kickstarter, it was successful. Can you describe how that system works and how it might be different from what's in the Razer? So the Razer Hydra was a very similar technology. Of course, the difference is Hydra was wired. The STEM was designed to be wireless. The controllers need to be wireless. The base needs to be wireless, so the consumer have the, the freedom to position it anywhere they want and, and have the freedom to experience that game or 3D modeling in any way they want. Now, Razer was a license. We will continue licensing our technology to companies like Razer, but at the same time, we decided with the you know, amazing uh, you know, sh uh, appearance of, of the Oculus Rift, we've decided that VR needs a, a, its own input device and it needs a wireless input device and we felt that we need to bring in the STEM system to show the, the best of breed how it will affect the experience in virtual reality and that's really what you get with with uh, the STEM system. And wireless is really important because with something like, like a tethered system you are constrain your base station and your controllers are constrained by where you can connect to your game system or your computer and sometimes that could be uh, let itself to interference and it's other and limited range and now with this new STEM system you can move it for example away from your TV and on your couch or anywhere you want in the room. The STEM system was designed to, to work within eight feet of, of radius from the base. The Hydra is limited to about three, three and a half feet. Mm. The, the STEM system was, was designed to enable other hardware manufacturer to basically use you know, the STEM that is inside, if you want to use it yours. You can uh, so see. it's a modular system. You can take it out, and now this can be plugged into any input device, a golf club, you know, a sword, anybody can use it, and now you have motion in their device. It's designed as an overall system that can provide any kind of, of uh, motion tracking to, to what consumers and developers of content have in mind. So that module you just pulled out, that's where the coils are that's tracking in relation to the base station. Exactly. And with your Kickstarter, you're launching a system that supports up to five of these that you can put on potentially on wristbands, helmets, or controllers like what you've developed, right? You're doing a better job than me <laughs> in describing the differences. That's exactly right. You got five Five track devices, five STEM enabled uh, input devices can be, can be uh, controlled at, at every four milliseconds with the STEM system. Of course, the Hydra is limited to the two controllers that are wired to the Hydra. And the shape and form of the STEM module is determined by the technology, and this, this is the form that you guys have settled on? This is a form that was designed to make things very easy to work with. At, at the, this early level, meaning it can be much smaller. 
And obviously, over the, over the next two, three years, it will be reduced in size. We have many models that, you know, in the, in the roadmap is going to be all the way down to a very, very slim bracelet. Mm -hmm. But at this moment, we made it so it's very accessible. People can take it, put it on, create prototypes, and, and, and explore what is the best way to control virtual reality. So I want to talk about software and games in particular. So this is something some of you guys are working on. Your prototype is coming out in July. And how are games going to be supported? What's the SDK situation like? So the SDK uh, with uh, the STEM system is, again, very similar to the Hydra, although obviously here we support more, more track devices. But we support, obviously, window, Windows, Linux, and the Mac. Now, Mac OS. Now, uh, we will eventually support Android and iOS for virtual camera applications. You know, take the stem, put it in the back of an iPad, and now you have your virtual camera, camera for eSports, for many, many different applications that people can use. But, you know, it, the SDK will support uh, at any, any application from gaming. It will be an open SDK so people can actually have access to it, develop what, what they feel can, can be, you know, from a, from a, a game that, that uh, you know, was designed for younger kids to a game that was designed for older kids, for any applications that make sense. In terms of graphics engine support right now, Unity is what you're launching with? So it's already have a, a Unity uh, support. We are working on Unreal right now, working very, uh, Unreal actually, you know, uh, Epic is uh, uh, reached out to us and we are working with them. Uh, obviously, we support Source Engine with Valve and we mm -hmm. support the whole Steam OS. You know, which is, you know, our friends at Valve have done an amazing, amazing job helping us uh, get to the point that, that uh, the STEM system can support uh, Portal 2 in VR, which is going to come hopefully soon. We intend, uh, and again, uh, there's no guarantees, but we intend to be able to, to provide Portal 2 in VR as a free update to all uh, uh, Hydra and STEM owners. And I want to talk about the control a little bit more. Tell me about the design and how this is supposed to interface with, for example, a game. We learned a lot from, from the ergonomics of the Hydra. The Hydra, you're holding and, and your, your wrist is a little bit pulled. You have to play in a, in a, in a way of pull down. This is more of a, you know, like it or not, but a very comfortable pistol grip. This uh, enables you to, to practically spend hours with this controller. Most of the weight, obviously, is you know where where the battery is, which is right okay. right in the grip, and here you know the stem itself, as you felt yourself, is extremely light. So overall, it's it's uh, it's such. Now the reason we moved the stem in the front because we had to make it detachable. You know, in in a, you know in the case of other developers, they can make it such that you know it can be placed inside the controller, and then they can just make it as, as simple as cut it here and there, and it's, it's going to work for them at that level. And in your user uh, testing, uh, is this best used sitting down, standing up, with big movements? And so the STEM system is coming with controllers, as we call them STEM controllers, and it's coming with STEM packs. Okay. The packs are basically the STEM with power and, and some basic processing added to it. And that's a, to enable you to put it on your wrist, to put it on your, mm -hmm. on, your, on your shins, on your legs, and to put it on your waist and, track, and to get a full body like you see in our, in our uh, overall uh, poster over there. So the bottom line is you really want to be able to, to, to use, use the, the stem and the stem pack with the appropriate uh, method, meaning the packs was designed obviously for you to potentially do exercise, fitness uh, type of activities from yoga to tai chi all the way down to you know, to dancing. But if you want to play a, a, a either, a, you know, a Team Fortress type game, or you want to play a Portal, or you want to do Make VR, which is our 3D modeling mm -hmm. application, you will be sitting down and spend the amount of time and the precision. You make very, very fine moves that obviously the STEM enables, not to mention the VR experience that is, is definitely a sitting down with, with the Rift. Yeah, you mentioned the Rift a lot, and they announced that CES they have positional tracking with their optical system. And is now the STEM, is it meant to be more of a complement to that? The STEM was always designed to be a complement for displays. And, and the fact that, uh, and, and, and Oculus always promised to have position tracking. Mm. And, and I, we can talk also about the Omni. And you know the Virtuous Omni with their yep. lo locomotive also have their own fit tracking, and we will integrate, and we already fully integrated with Oculus. 
when they decide to bring in the position tracking for the, for the, for the Rift, we will have full integration for it. And it will save the consumer to the user one pack. Instead of needing to put it on your Rift, you will just put it on your chest or put it on your, on your waist. And now you will have a full skeleton control with position of the head, it will be the best, the ultimate experience. So they're taking care of the head tracking and then the, an extra stem pack can go in your chest and you have one more point of, of tracking. Now I wanna talk about Make VR because you guys are launching that uh, today basically. Uh, and the new Kickstarter, this is software for 3D modeling. So why does the stem work well for 3D modeling? What's, what are the problems with interface in 3D modeling in a virtual space? So before we even talk about the specific problems in, in, uh, in 3D modeling, uh, I would like to, to talk about the overall uh, importance of motion tracking, tracking your hands, extending your hands and your body into the virtual world in, a, in, in an intuitive and natural way is at least 50% of the experience, uh, uh, of, the, of the immersion, and therefore the better it betters the experience that, that people have with digital media. Right, a lot of people wearing HMDs, they don't know where their hands are, they're holding game pads. Uh, Exactly. And a lot of people hacked it, you know, they have a camera sensor to try to put their hands in the virtual space, but it's not precise. Exactly. Now, especially in, in VR, like you say, but even if, if you have a 2D screen in front of you, but going back to 3D modeling now, if you are trying to model, an, a, a, you know, a, let's just make it a simple MacBot, nothing too complicated. You want to make a MacBot and you want to make it, let's say, and, and then send it to your MakerBot and print it or send it up to Shapeways and print it. You know, you want it to be a good experience for you. You want it to be an easy experience for you. So what you will see yourself doing in current CAD application, you'll find yourself working in a very unintuitive fashion. You'll find yourself working it, it with menus after menus after menus when you have to, to be everything that, that is different than, than creative and, and intuitive experience. And therefore, talking to the modeling, industry, the modeling application industry, and talking to the people that use those 3D models uh, and, and need that content for 3D printing, as an example, it, it is a huge barrier for consumers since applications, most applications that use professional CAD engines are very, very expensive. Many, many thousands and thousands of dollars a year. And applications that are low cost are very low quality CAD engines and therefore they quality of the CAD model, the, the, ob the object created, is very low quality and for printing, especially for 3D printing, it's useless. You will have to spend so much time trying to fix it, eventually all your work down the drain. So what we've done, we've said to ourselves, again, for content creation, both for 3D printing, for games, for, for many different reasons people want to create, just as artists even, that want to create some piece of art in, in, in digital uh, world, we said, if I give, if you have the, the, the creative capability to use your hands, if I can extend those hands of yours into the 3D world, and you can create with that as intuitive as, 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 a, as you can imagine it, and that's even before Oculus Rift, then you will get the solution. So again, instead of you moving with joysticks, we've created a whole new revolutionizing the UI space, what we call 3D multi-touch. You're actually reaching in, taking over a model, right. pulling it in your hands, you know, scaling it up or down, taking another model, putting them together, cutting them from each other. All that experience is just like you would do it if you played with, with Lego, you played right. in, in the field. So it's, it's a piece of software that's low barrier to entry, but with high precision and powerful CAD tools that you find in professional grade tools and made to work with HMBs and, and things like the Oculus Rift also. Exactly. Um, so there's also a networking capability in, in this, and, and that's something that we haven't seen before. So how, how does that work? So we, we spent some time in focus testing. We spent some time talking to and, and interviewing and, 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 and having users from all ages. And the point is that what we found, some of them, you know, especially the kids, as I call them, you know, in, in the, in the, in a, from middle school to high school and college, they do everything together today. Yeah, they, they play Minecraft, they love collaborating. Exactly, from the Minecraft space. And, 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 and we found that they are putting together teams one guy, one, one kid can be more, more mechanical savvy, has, has more of an understanding of how to put things together, but another, another person can be, you know, you know, can be more creative. And they created together thing, you know, object models that were so much more exciting, both as a visual and also for them. And there, when you go in into, the, into the whole business model of this, how 
how, how, how consumers and users will be able to create models, make those models available to the community, like bring it to Shapeways, make it available in their store, share it. Very so, as, as we discussed earlier, super user will be able to create tools that will enable you know, more, more casual users to do a better job in modeling. All that is basically possible in the combination of the 3D multi-touch that, that the STEM is enabling together with a professional CAD engine we, that we, we brought in with all our you know, tools and capabilities that we, we wrapped around it. So in make VR, up to five people will be able to network around the world and not everyone needs to have the STEM system. You're gonna support any type of positional tracking, any type of motion tracking system that has six access? Exactly. So, all position uh, six degrees of freedom position trackers will will be supported, and it is also going to be open for any other three D uh, uh, six degrees of freedom and three D uh, motion mm -hmm. tracking devices to make it available. So the SDK for Make VR will be open for all peripheral makers. So we envision Make VR as a way for everybody to meet, everybody to create together, and then when they decide what they want to do with it, they just bring up our virtual tablet. You have an account with Shapeways? Here it is, go to Shapeways. You don't have an account with Shapeways? You have your own printer? Bring it to your own printer. You'll be able to go in and out, but stay within, within the world of, of, of the making of, the, of the, what we call Make VR Workshop. Sounds like it has huge potential. I can't wait to try it out. I know Will's been working in the back 3D modeling the whole time. That's why we've been talking for so long. So you can building something cool. We'll check out what he's making. But thank you, Amir, for showing us the STEM system and for telling us about Make VR. It's a pleasure. Um, and you guys have a Kickstarter launching now, so people can find out more about that yes. um, online. The Kickstarter is launching in in uh, two weeks. It's uh, this coming uh, February 5th. And uh, I really appreciate any kind of support. And more importantly than anything is the feedback. Everything that you see in the STEM system and, and many, many of the features that, you, that will come now that are already embedded in Make VR and will be are directly as, an, as, a, as a result of the feedback we got from, from the community. So well, Great. Please. We can't wait to test this out in our office, in our labs. And we'll have more on Tesla.com. I'm Norm. I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.